Hey y'all, Leah's here. Excuse, pardon the cliche of recording in a car. I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Uh, at least this one's moving, right? My hands are on the wheel. Uh, I just had a, a, a great trip back up to Chicago, a train with, with, uh, with you all. Awesome training on Wednesday. Got to be there at the beginning of kickboxing on um, on Thursday, and was at the, um, the early morning training on Friday. It's been it's been great to see everything uh, grow and attendance go, and um, great to see everyone training hard. The the advanced people are helping the beginners. The beginners are trying to push themselves. We have people just fought that are uh, competing again. So it's been it's been really awesome, and that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about uh, competition. Uh, I've been really heartened. To, to have people compete regularly the last couple of years, people fight regularly, uh, those who hadn't fought before getting in it, uh, people testing themselves in jiu-jitsu competition that hadn't done it or hadn't done it for a very long time. And I'm really heartened that uh, so many of our newer members are already seeing that example and wanting to test themselves as well. And I think that's, uh, that's a really, really beautiful thing. Uh, I, we love people testing themselves. And when you start, testing yourselves consists of just walking in the door, uh, then it becomes uh, doing it consistently, then it, you know, little things, whatever it might be, doing more of the warm up, doing more drills, uh, coming more days than you used to, things of that nature, just getting comfortable and being brave and being in a new environment. And once that becomes commonplace enough for you where you don't, you know, we're a healthy place and hopefully you're no longer uh, scared after you've been there for a little bit because you realize it's a safe place for you in a safe space, then you want to test yourself in competition. And I really love that. Competition, competitors need a certain amount of delusion there or an, an audacity. It takes an audacity to say, I am going to sign out a date, I'm going to show up, and either it's an agreed upon opponent or a group of people or an opponent I don't know if it's in a tournament setting or a smoker setting. I'm going to sign up and I am agreeing to step onto the mats, into the ring, into a cage, and uh, fight another trained person because I think I can... I can, I can beat them. That, that takes a certain amount of uh, audacity, um, and the, the, the germ of that might be even a little bit uh, delusional. Maybe there's nothing in our backgrounds to the outward eye that would uh, suggest that we're capable of such a thing, but we have this almost at first delusional belief inside of us that we can do it. That, that can be a beautiful thing when we put work uh, behind that, right? Uh, we really like to give a lot of support to our competitors, whether they're pros, uh, whether they're amateurs, recreational, occasional competitors, or brand new people who want to get into it, who want to support you with that. Whether you're a first timer or you're first time competing with us, give you a worksheet to fill out like, okay, how much do I really know from each position? Do I have a go-to from each position in a jiu-jitsu match? Uh, for example, you'd be using this as a bit of an example, uh, but it goes similar things for all sorts of uh, combat sports. Do I have a go-to in every position offensively? Maybe a major position offensively and defensively great. Do I have the control of my ego such that when uh, I know I'm in trouble, I will tap out? Uh, do I have enough awareness of of the fight to know when I am in danger uh, so that uh, I can tap out, right? And do I have the conditioning to deal with the much increased stress level, the adrenaline increase, the adrenaline dump uh, that we face in, in fights or matches of, of any any sort, right? Have I done that type of work? That type of evaluation, something we help guide you with, right? We want we want you to go in there prepared, supported, not because in and of itself we care about wins, because we really don't. I am of the belief, the team is of the belief that if you in a good place where you're learning and you're training consistently and you compete consistently, over time, you will have your share of wins and losses, so the wins will come. But we take things seriously. We don't want people to be discouraged needlessly, so we try to give you the support to do that. So I love that people uh, want to uh, compete and have it. That's super exciting. Uh, and I think that's the that's the main external, um, external marker that I would ever want someone to, to, to seek. Uh, I think mostly we should do this because we get internal uh, gratification from it. We seek our own uh, approval and are proud of ourselves. And it's not about a uh, coach being proud of us in and of itself. It's, you know, it's not about society respecting us more in and of itself. Um, 
uh, and it's not about achieving a belt rank uh, in and of itself. If you have a good relationship with your coaches and they respect you and you respect them and you've developed something, certainly uh, their approval um, can, can feel nice, right? And, and your approval of them uh, and appreciation of them as coaches will feel nice to them. Certainly, similarly with uh, within Jiu Jitsu, we do our belt ranks. If you have a good relationship with your coach and your team and they know you well enough to give you that type of recognition of what you, a level you've already achieved, that can, that symbolism could be a nice thing, right? So when I say those things are, are those external kind of uh, uh, validations in and of themselves are not great. I think, I mean in and of themselves, they can be a part of a total package of validation, the self-validation that we want you all to feel, right? Mostly I want, we want you to feel it inside of you. But sometimes going outside of yourself uh, and seeking validation outside of yourself is cool. And I think the, the main way in which is that's uh, really cool is when we're competing, right? And we test ourselves against people that we don't know, or don't know as well as our teammates in an environment uh, that's new to us. I think that's that's something outside of ourselves that's connected to the work we've been doing on ourselves. And it's a really, uh, it's a really cool thing. Uh, it's a really powerful thing. But even that external validation or the validation we get from something not strictly speaking connected uh, only to our own, you know, our own uh, actions and thoughts, um, that is competition. The glow of winning uh, and competition is not really the best thing we get out of out of competing. It's the process of preparing for it, facing it, seeing what we're made of, learning from it, making adjustments, doing it again, win, lose, or draw. Um, and, and that's what I want to talk about, the process. The process of training is something that you have to fall in love with inexplicably, irrationally, outside of any logical good reason it's good for you know, building community, all these nice things. That all there has to be a part of it that just you like it a lot, <laughs> and that's why you're doing it. And you, you're, you're doing it because because you enjoy yourself, right? That's the best possible way to get ready for competition. You'll train more that way. You'll do things when no one's uh, looking uh, because you enjoy it. That's the best reason for doing stuff, uh, other than helping others, right? Is is you doing something because you enjoy it and it, this is really nice. It gives you the best chance of winning because it gives you more likelihood that you're going to put in uh, extra time, right? When we compete, everyone is good. Uh, everyone we face at every uh, level of competition is good. It's tough. If it's a local competition, you're facing the people brave enough not just to show up, but the people that are committed enough to train the most in their academy. So you're facing the most, uh, the most committed people of every uh, every academy in your area. That's why every competition whether it's jiu-jitsu or boxing, Muay Thai or MMA, is hard at every, uh, at every level, right? You never know who you're gonna face. You might have matches or fights that are that are easy, and the next one's gonna be really, really hard. You never know who you're gonna face. And, and so you gotta prepare for it. You gotta, you gotta really, and to prepare properly, you just have to put a lot of time. The best way to put a lot of time is to really enjoy the process of, of training, right? So if you wanna train, excuse me, if you wanna compete, it's got to be more than wanting to. It's got to be more than an urge. It's got to be more than uh, the motivation uh, to have glory or to do something for yourself or to even beat some some demon or to make you know to, to have an accomplishment uh, at the end that's connected to a, a certain result or sets of results. Because motivation is fleeting and glory um, is fleeting at best. Mostly, it it doesn't exist. Um, I'm not trying to be philosophical. I'm saying it doesn't exist within the context of, of, of fighting. Um, no one outside of our tiny little world we've created is going to care about um, your wins and losses. Uh, they just, they're just not going to. Um, no one is going to, outside of this little world we've created for ourselves, is going to care about your belts. It's going to be impressed with a stripe of, of tape or a purple belt or a blue belt or a brown belt, right? Like no one else is gonna be impressed. These things only mean something if they mean something uh, to you. And the best way for that to really mean something qualitatively, uh, unattached to uh, the outside world's estimation based on, on these designations or this CV that you build, is because it helps you think about a process, a journey, uh, a level of commitment that you've made to yourself, to your community, right? Your, your training community, right? So I'll say it to say this. If you want to compete 
show yourself that it's more than a fleeting want. Show yourself that this is something that you're doing as a natural byproduct of you wanting to push yourself. Hey, look at this. I've been coming in six days a week. I, I guess maybe it's time to, to look at competing. If you're not, then you know, maybe you don't need to compete. If you um, are a stone beginner, you don't need to necessarily be six, you know, six times a week to compete. You might just be three days a week, right? Three days a week, you always make your days, and in between you're doing auxiliary work, you're working your conditioning, you're hitting the pool, you're doing your jog, you're doing your uh, your squats, uh, you know, push-ups, dips, pull-ups, uh, before class or after class, your days in between class, right? You're drilling uh, even at home. On, our, on this YouTube page, we have drills on here that you can do with a chair for passing the card, right? You can do drills on your own on the ground. You're gonna always, you've gotta be working on stuff in between your three days a week if you're a stone beginner wanting to compete at home. You've gotta be doing some type of work at least once a day, six days a week. You've gotta be watching tape and film. You've gotta start really not just, you know, um, thinking about what you do for positions, but really working on those things in those positions and really see, you know, how quickly do they come to you in, in, in the match. Um, when you're doing roles and stuff, right? I think that's super, super important. That competing should be a natural outgrowth of, of you training so much that, you know what, let me give myself this little reward uh, and, and go test myself, right? So remember that, I wanted this to be about the process. That goes for, for, for belts as well. The belt doesn't mean anything in, in, in the abstract. Or at least it doesn't mean anything to, to me or to anyone else in the world, right? If you're starting out, you want to know about belts i want to know why you why you what, what does that mean to you why do you care about a belt it doesn't come with money it comes with injuries <laughs> you know it comes with a lot of time spent on your own alone doing stuff that no one sees or appreciates or time away from those who do appreciate you doing training if they don't train with you uh, and you have to they won't understand why you're doing this stuff um, before you care about the belt rank you have to think about why do you care about it right uh, I'd rather you didn't care too much about it, um, but if you do care about it, it has to be tied to something qualitative, and I think that's going to be like looking back in your rearview mirror. Oh, wow, I got this belt promotion. Jeez, I, I'm kind of surprised by that. I've just been enjoying training, just been enjoying competing, but you know what? You know what? I have been doing a lot of training. I've been really consistent. I've been helping my teammates. I've been competing a lot, and you know what? Looking back on it, I really it means a lot to me that my coaches uh, are, are giving me this symbolic recognition of the work I've already accomplished. That sounds about right. I've been beating white belts. I should be a blue belt now, right? Or whatever the case may be, right? I'm helping out the, uh, the newer people. That's what I think it should mean something. Looking back, if you're looking towards belts, even if you get them all, even if you win a world championship in every belt in jiu-jitsu, you're ultimately going to be left uh, uh, kind of empty. And, you know, real talk, real politic here, um, the only people I've ever seen stick around for, I mean, I've been doing this since 1999. Only people I've really even seen stick around um, are the ones that just, they just care about the training. They want to know how many more days can I get in? You know, what can I do in between? Uh, and they're not the ones that are, are obsessing about uh, the belts outwardly. Maybe it's something internal. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, but I wanted to be focused on that, that journey because that's the only way any of this stuff can really mean something. Most of us aren't going to make any money from this. Even if we win, most of us are not going to win championships, and if we do, they don't come with any money. Um, so it's got to mean something to you. It's got to mean something to you. Um, and the relationships that we cultivate in healthy and training environments, rare as they are, but we like to think we have one at foundation, those are often, the relationships and the experience are often the things that I feel, if you take it for what it's worth, this, this older guy, 24 years, the things that really stick with me the most are not even the wins. They're not even getting my arm raised in the cage. It's not even knocking someone unconscious. It's not even, you know, winning by a submission, uh, and, you know, uh, in, 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 with a move I was training, you know, in, in a match. It's not, a, not even the pro matches. It's none of those lights, not being on, on TV or fighting on cable or in a main event or fighting out of the country. These are all things I think about and remember. But the, the biggest things I remember, like some funny conversation I had after class uh, with a teammate or some, you know, uh, some meaningful connection I made or or some sadness of, you know, losing someone that was a friend that, that you know, we made through through training, right? Those are the most, those are the most, those are the things that really I think about the most for what it's worth. And the things that I regret the most aren't even the losses um, or, or, or the, um, or even things which I regret a lot more than losses, times where I didn't show up, right? Show times where I didn't 
do the work enough to compete. It's 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 like it's related to just effort I didn't put in the gym. Like, oh, I really, you know what? I, I wasted time doing this. I would have been a lot happier putting in this work here, being with my friends, doing stuff like that. So I think the highs and the lows are really um, usually connected to the, for better or for worse, uh, to the relationships we cultivate. And so I want to I wanna close with this, talking about how we really make sure that we, we, we're good teammates so that we we protect the possibility or the, the already existing things that actually really matter, which are experiences um, for ourselves and our teammates. Um, and, uh, and the relationships we have with those teammates, right? So when we focus on things like wins uh, in competition sometimes, or just wins generally, or winning generally, or beating things, or being better than um, something other than our, a previous version of ourself uh, in some limited capacity, because everyone has intrinsic value that I don't want touched by your development and skill, right? Like you might want to be better than you were in skill, but I, I really hope that fundamentally that's not super tied to your sense of self-worth right uh any more than to say i'm going to give myself a pat on the back for being more disciplined or treating my body better or you know doing things for my mental health and the training happens to be a part of that and stuff like that uh but you know something that that you can really do to, to negatively affect the experience of others uh is by focusing too much on winning or being better than or beating or anything like that or promotions and which is hierarchical right uh, is it you know something we can do is by, by focusing too much on those things is, is to like become someone that we don't even realize we're becoming in the gym right so here are some examples i'll stop being vague training is um is training and it's a really sacred space because we're doing dangerous things with one another but because we trust each other um and because you know consent is explicit and given and respected and, and and things like that, and we're being aware of one another, um, it's a really I don't know. It's a really intimate space. It's it's a really uh, it's a space where people have to, as a base level, have to be like respect others' humanity and others' experience, and and realize that people are there for for all sorts of reasons. Some people might have had a rough day. So you know, this is the only. The only place they give respect, uh, you know, in their day, or some people might be their blow of steam. Some people have a great day and a great life, and they're just, you know, enjoying life on the mass as an extension of an uh, otherwise great day. But we want to make sure that we're not thinking of practice as anything other than a place to. Excuse me, I cut off there. We want to make sure that we're not looking at practice as anything other than a place to to uh to better ourselves enjoy ourselves and and and, uh, and help others even if we have very specific goals even if we're a pro fighter and we have a title fight practice is for bettering ourselves uh and others and what gets in the way of that is we start thinking of practice rounds like rolling or sparring as things that we're winning or or and um you know you want to you want to do things you want to work on weaknesses that you and your coaches have realized. You want to work on strengths that you need to build. Uh, but outside of that, we're not winning and we're not losing in practice. We're just not. I don't know Michael Jordan's practice record in scrimmages with the Bulls. I have no idea what it was. No idea. I have uh, no idea what um, Robert Drysdale's record is with his teammates when he was coming up. Um, I have no idea. It's because it doesn't matter, right? He's never going to talk about it. Um, good, classy people are never going to talk about what happens in practice. And we're not going to do it in practice either. We don't want to hear as coaches, oh, I tapped out this person in practice. I tapped out that person. We have, we have low class sizes. We see what's happening, right? You should be proud of yourself if you've come over a hump. Maybe there's someone that you've never been able to submit before and you were able to do it. Pat yourself on the back. That's that's fine. Make a mental note of it, you know, and that's good. Maybe it's time for you to pass them up skill wise, and it's time for you to to help them out. But talking about these things is going to give a really bad impression to your teammates. And we need our teammates to be there for us to protect our health, and we need to protect their health as well. And we just need to really try to make sure this is a good environment. So unintentionally, when we're focused on winning, we can start doing things like. You know, talking to coach, yeah, tap this person, that tap that person. You know, you may not even realize, but those people are hearing that, and it makes them feel, uh, um, you know, less than. Or if you don't show up to compete, and someone else competes, and you like, 
you know, downplay the, uh, you know, what they did, or if you're a competitor yourself and, and you down you downgrade or degrade, I should say, your 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 competition, it doesn't actually lift you up. It doesn't make you look any better. Um, as a general rule, but especially in training, we can't give one another the unsafe feeling that in addition to how hard this is mentally or physically to be in that struggle in a sparring round or a rolling round, that in addition to that, you know, my teammate might really relish having one over me and then they might start telling others and bragging about it. We can't have that. It's not, you, no one's going to like training with you. No one's going to be there for you when you need it. So don't want any of that. No one cares or is impressed by your practice record, to be fair. No one's going to care or, or, or be impressed by your competition record any more than you are, right? So at the end of the day, it's got to be something that's that's good for you, uh, that makes you feel um, makes you feel proud of yourself. Even if you're winning big fights and big competitions, ultimately, the, the, the really awesome, and I won't lie, when you win a fight, it feels really amazing for like 48 hours. And when you lose a fight, it feels really bad for like 48 hours. Um, and then you get over it one or the other. Then you're back in the gym. If you're doing what you should be, you're back in the gym. And if you won, then your teammate taps you out. You know, the next week you're like, yep, I'm not perfect. I'm not Godzilla like I thought it was, right? Or you might lose, you feel really down, but you drag yourself to the gym. And then you're around your friends, your, your, your community, and they lift you up a little bit. Or you start enjoying it again intrinsically, for, you know, for the, the, the value it has intrinsically just to enjoy yourself and release endorphins and things like that. So the highs and the lows from, from competition, uh, they're not going to stick with you. They're just not. Uh, you've got to be proud of yourself for competing, and that's got to be what you get out of it. Um, the highs and lows of training, um, that, that, that can stick with you. And the way to protect it and to protect the experience of others is to be a good teammate and uh, not focus on beating uh, your teammates but learning from it. You're going you're gonna to push each other really, really, really hard. And we, of course, are going to understand when we're improving or we're not improving. If we make a nice breakthrough, and it's hand-to-hand. It's -hand, you know, simulated combat, uh, unarmed combat, you know, sometimes that manifests, and most times it manifests in being able to do something you weren't able to do before, right, against someone else, right? But we just want to measure that. We want to measure that um, that need to at least, you know, verbally talk about it because it might make other people feel bad. And then, one, that makes them feel bad. Two, believe me, they ain't going to be there for you, and we need each other. When you're out there, you're competing uh, on your own, but the work is built on, on a whole bunch of other people putting a lot of their time and their trust and their effort into you and their success is gonna you know, be a part from what you put into them. So really be in this for the journey because the medals, the wins, the records, um, the belts, the stripes, they don't mean anything in and of themselves, right? They should be uh, uh, something that helps you think back on, on uh, really enriching, wonderful experiences you had that's based on really relationships, right? Even relationships with your opponent, that's a really intimate bond, and usually you don't become enemies afterwards. You really share something positive with them. That win, lose, or draw, that you, you, if you see them again, it's something that most of the time we, we can really appreciate. So, being things for the right reason, and then I think that'll make us you know, better training partners. Be there for your training partners. See how you can help them. They're gonna see how you can, and then they're gonna be much more willing and able to, to help you and then just, you know, be quiet. Talk to your coaches about your goals. They're gonna give, we're gonna give you a path to, to, try to, to try to meet them or to try to reevaluate are they the right goals. But then that's it. You don't need to talk about it every day. Uh, the people that talk the most about their goals are the people, take it for what it's worth. Maybe I'm wrong or maybe I'm lying to you. I don't, I'm not. But the people that talk the most about their goals are the people that almost always wash out. That's it. I have friends that are world champions. I've known them for decades. Some of them just years, not decades yet. None of them, none of them talked about what they were going to do. This, they, they, they talk to their teammates and their coaches to help set up plans, so and then they execute the plan, and maybe it goes well for them. Um, don't talk about your wins in practice because there are no wins in practice other than showing up, doing more than you did before and helping others out, all right? So I'm very proud of you all. Keep some of those things in mind uh, so we don't have to bug you about them, but I'm so glad people want to compete. I think it's a really good test that you can use to really 
to measure your progress and to something you can really, really be proud of because you, you face some fears, you face some difficulties, right? And win, lose, or draw, if you do that and you're a good teammate along the way, we're going to be really proud of you all.